This question asks us to determine the average oxidation state of carbon using the oxidation state rules and the individual oxidation states of the carbons using the structure. Now, since I have the structure in front of me, I think I'll start with that first. Each bond, of course, contains two electrons, so I will draw in the electrons in the bonds around carbon-1. Now, when we think about oxidation state, the electrons should belong to the most electronegative atom. So, let's look at carbon and hydrogen. I've given you the chi values, and you can see that carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. So, I will let the bonds between carbon and hydrogen have the electrons belong to just carbon-1. If I look at carbon-1 and carbon-2, they have the same electronegativity, so I will split that. And fluorine, I hope you remember, is more electronegative than carbon, so I will allow those electrons to belong to fluorine. So if I look at the oxidation state of carbon-1, remember that it's group number minus possession number. Carbon is group 4, and I can see 5 electrons in the circle. So carbon-1 has oxidation state minus 1. Now for carbon-2. Oxygen, I hope you remember, is more electronegative than carbon. So even though I'm drawing in the dots, I don't actually need them. Because the circle around carbon-2 will only allow carbon-2 to share electrons equally with carbon-1. According to oxidation state, it will have none of the electrons belonging to oxygen. So again, it's group number four. There is one electron in the circle, so the oxid oxidation state is plus three. All right, we have those two pieces of information now. Let's go on to the next one. The second part of this question asks us to determine the average oxidation state of the compound. The compound is, of course, C2H3FO2. So above are the oxidation state rules. Essentially, this is going to add up to zero. So I have four different elements in this material, and it should add up to zero. If we go through the rules in order, we see that fluorine has an oxidation state of minus 1. So I will put minus 1 for my fluorine. Going further down, I can see that hydrogen, when bonded to nonmetals, is plus 1. So each hydrogen is plus 1. That makes three hydrogens plus 3. I can also see that the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2. There are two oxygens, so that would be minus 4. So what goes in the blank? Plus 2. Of course, that plus 2 is distributed among two carbons, so each individual carbon is plus 1. That would be the C average. It would be equal to plus 1. I want to remind you, too, of how average is determined. You add two numbers and then divide the sum by 2. So if we remember, C1 plus a C2 divided by 2. C1 should be equal to minus 1. C2 was a plus 3. Divide that by 2. And what do you wind up with for C average? Plus 1. So that's how you do that problem.